Early one morning, Rusty was waiting at Croven's gate with the passenger train. He glanced over as Patrick pulled alongside with the connecting run. Hello, Rusty. Patrick said, slightly surprised. He knew that Peter Sam usually took this train. Has Peter Sam broken down? Not exactly. He went up to the telephone railway yesterday for a visit. Renate is having his overhaul too, so we have to divide the rest of the work between the remaining five of us. Including having your only diesel on passenger trains. It's nothing I haven't done before, although I'm not quite used to it. That's understandable, Patrick replied. He looked closely at the little diesel. Ever since he'd met Rusty, there was something he'd been curious about. Rusty, may I ask you something? Go ahead. Well, I'm the fourth diesel here on the Northwest Railway. Fifth if you include Daisy, although she's numbered as a diesel rail car. But you're the only diesel on the Scarlowy Railway. Do you feel like you're one of a kind sometimes? Rusty considered Patrick's question for a moment. I'd have to say not really, Patrick. I mean, I'm own friends here. The fact I'm a diesel has never really come up. I'm glad to hear that. Patrick replied. A moment later, the guard's whistle sounded out, and Rusty had to leave. Later that afternoon, Rusty was taking some mining supplies up to the slate quarry. As he rounded the corner near Renea's station, he heard Sir Handel and Duncan talking in the sheds up ahead. I'll be glad when Renius is back on his wheels, Sir Handel was saying. Aye, it'll make things easier for the rest of us. I mean, it's bad enough now that we've got our maintenance diesel looking after passenger trains. I know what you mean. Unfortunately, Rusty had overheard the two steam engines. Maintenance diesel? I mean me. Why would they have a problem? Rusty said sadly, and his face fell. He couldn't see why Duncan or Sir Handel would have a problem with him taking passengers or helping out. The only explanation he could think of was that they thought he wasn't up to the task. Back at the station, Duncan glanced at the rear of Rusty's train. I mean, with this wee engine shortage, Rusty's work on keeping the track in good order is more important now than ever. None of us can afford to have an accident or be derailed. Exactly. Anyway, I must be going. See you later. Sir Handel replied, and he chuffed off. Further up the line, Rusty was still shocked by what he'd overheard. He'd always thought that the steam engines considered him an equal. But now, he couldn't help feeling quite alone. Patrick's earlier question came back to him. Rusty couldn't help wondering if he'd been wrong. Rusty, could you leave those trucks in that siding over there? Skarloey asked, breaking through the little diesel's thoughts. Hmm? That truck there? Yes, that's the one. Skarloey replied. He looked closely at Rusty. You're a little distracted, Rusty. Is something wrong? Rusty glanced over at Skarloey. He was still shaken from what he'd heard before. I'm fine, thank you. He replied and departed to shunt his trucks. Skarloey watched him go, slightly worried. It was quite unlike Rusty to be distracted like that. Despite the other engine's assurances, Skarloey was certain there was something wrong. Over the next few days, Rusty's mood didn't improve. He still performed his duties as well as he could, but he barely said a word to the other engine. Any attempts to cheer him up just fell flat. One afternoon, just after lunchtime, Sir Handel, Skarloey and Duke were resting in the shed. It was a Saturday, and so their schedule wasn't as busy as normal. You look worried, Grandpa. I was thinking about Rusty. Something's come over in these last few days. I've noticed that too, he seems rather depressed. I think we've all noticed it, Skarloey. He's not his usual self. Skarloey glanced over at the other two engines. Do you know what might be behind it? If I knew that, I'd have dealt with it by now. Sir Handel replied. A moment later, his driver strode up to him. 
Come on, Sir Handel. It's time for our next train. As Sir Handel departed, Skyloe and Duke exchanged a look. You've known Rusty longer than I have. Has he ever had this sort of depression before? Duke, I've never seen him like this. Before Duke could reply, his driver arrived. As the old engine headed out to take his next train, he felt a strange twinge in one of his cylinders. Duke made good time along the line, and he could hear the happy chatter of passengers from his coaches. But that strange twinge in his cylinders kept coming and going, and it was getting worse each time. He was just crossing the viaduct towards Renea's station when a cloud of steam erupted from his left cylinder. His driver quickly shut off steam. Duke, are you alright? It's my left cylinder driver. I think the lining's gone. I was afraid of that. You'll have to wait while we get help. Not here, driver. We can make it to Renea's station. It's just up ahead. Are you sure? How does your right cylinder feel? Fine driver. Stranding passengers in the middle of a line would never suit his grace. Very well, replied Duke's driver. Duke soon limped into Renea's station, bringing the train to a gentle stop next to the platform. The guard looked after the passengers, and Duke's driver came up to him. Duke, do you think you can go on? I'm not sure. Duke admitted. My right cylinder's starting to feel funny too, but we did pass Rusty about a mile back. He may be able to push us from behind. Duke's driver nodded. He then disappeared into the station building to call the thin controller. Rusty arrived a few minutes later, having been informed of the situation by radio. He gently buffered up to the brake van and was quickly coupled up. Ready when you are, Duke, called the little diesel. Duke whistled twice and the train set off. Duke did what he could to help, but Rusty ended up doing most of the work. They were soon making good time along the line. <sighs> Thanks for your help, Rusty. I'm sure the passengers appreciate it. I suppose so, Rusty replied glumly. What's got into you, Rusty? You've been downright miserable these last few days. We're all getting worried. Rusty thought for a moment. Duke? What would you do if you believed something for years and found out that something wasn't true? Duke carefully considered Rusty's question. When I was sheeted up in my old shed, Rusty, I believed that the Duke of Soda would come to rescue me. But as time went on, he didn't show. I began having doubts, which grew stronger and stronger. Then one day, those two clergymen found me. That's when I learned the truth. What was that? That Duke, the one I was thinking of, had passed away shortly after I was sheeted. His Grace, the current Earl of Sodor, was only a boy back then, barely knew of me. I'd never been so glad to be wrong. Duke paused. To answer your question, Rusty, I'd start by making sure I had the whole picture. I won't ask what's got you down, but it strikes me it's something you'd be glad to be wrong about. You can say that again, Rusty replied sadly. Later that evening, Rusty had finished his last run and joined the other engines in the shed. Sir Handel glanced over as the little diesel stopped. I hear you had to rescue Grandpa earlier. Sir Handel chuckled. You've all heard about it. Well done, Rusty, Duncan added in an obvious attempt to cheer up the little diesel. Rusty didn't say anything for a moment, then looked from Duncan to Sir Handel and back again. So are more than just a maintenance diesel, then? The other engines were shocked. Of course! What made you think? Skaloi broke off, confused. It's bad enough we got our own maintenance diesel taking passengers at the moment. He said that a couple of days ago, just as I was going past. Rusty said, with an accusing look at Duncan. He then moved his gaze to Sir Handel. Then you agreed with him? Sir Handel and Duncan were horrified. Oh no. Is that what this has been about? Yes. 
I thought I was amongst friends. But these last few days, I felt alone. Like I'm one of a kind. Rusty, it's not like that at all. Then what was it like, Duncan? I hope you've got a good explanation. You should have a good one too, Falcon. Duncan and Sir Handel exchanged a look. "'Twas my words that could have been picked better," Duncan said, and he looked apologetically at Rusty. "'You should have said it's bad enough that Rusty's been taken off some of his maintenance duties. We all ken how important you are, looking after the track we all run on. I know what the rough track can do to an engine, and one of us getting stuck in a tunnel or having some other sort of accident is the last thing we need right now. I mean, with only five of us running at the moment and all." "'That's what I was agreeing with, Rusty. You and the workmen ensure that we have smooth rails to run on with nothing to trip up an engine. It is important work that you do, and I've said so to Skarloey on several occasions. You'll have them. Skarloey agreed. Duke smiled at Rusty. I think you've got the full picture now, Rusty. Rusty smiled for the first time in days. Yes, I'm glad I was wrong. Rusty said, and he glanced over at Duncan and Sir Handel. I'm sorry. What for? As I said, I could have picked my words better. Just didn't forget, you're no one of a kind. You're one of us. The other engines all agreed, but before they could say any more, the thin controller strode up. Good evening, engines. I thought you would all like to know that Reneas' overhaul is nearly complete, and he will be returning to service after some final tests tomorrow. Mr. Hsu and his team have been working extra hard to have him ready, ahead of schedule. The other engines grinned. Having Reneas back would make things a little bit easier. Secondly, I overheard you talking about Rusty just now. You're not the only ones who've expressed those concerns. Rusty's maintenance work is crucial to the smooth running of this railway, and I don't like having to take him off it. Here, here. Furthermore, if he hadn't been available today, Duke's passengers would have been stranded, as there was no spare engine available. In order to address both of these issues, I have asked Mr. Hugh to put together a design for a new engine. A new engine, sir? That's right, Skarloey, to be built here in our works. As you know, the Tallyflynn Railway built a new number 7, Tom Rolt, a few years ago. They have already agreed to provide their plans for him, and guidance to Mr. Hugh. With that, the thin controller turned and strode away. An excited conversation sprung up amongst the engines. Rusty couldn't help grinning as he joined in. He knew for certain he was amongst friends now, and it sounded like they'd soon have a new one.